I'm going to talk about seven surprising reasons for an iodine deficiency. Now, the reason I said surprising is because you may have already known that if the soils don't have iodine in them, if they're poor in trace minerals, you're going to end up with a iodine deficiency. Now, that's very true, especially if you're getting food more inland from the ocean, since iodine is normally from ocean food. If you're buying food like in America from the Midwest, chances are it's not going to have iodine, not to mention the farming methods where they're using just NPK. Uh, that's uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. They don't put the trace minerals back in the soil, unfortunately. So if it's not in the soil, it's not in the plant. If it's not in the plant, it's not in the animals. So poor soil is number one, and also dietary. You, you don't consume enough seafood, shellfish. You never consume crab lobster. You don't consume uh, clams or mussels. And also you don't consume enough fish from the ocean, nor seaweed as in sea kelp. And so typically I think most people know about this one and this one, but they definitely don't know about this one right here. Number one, selenium deficiency. If you're deficient in selenium, you're going to be deficient in iodine. And both selenium and iodine do uh, work on the thyroid um, selenium is very important in the conversion from T4 to T3, the active form of the thyroid hormone. And iodine is there to actually be a part of the, the molecule, which is like T4, T3. What T3 and T4 represent is the number of iodine molecules attached to that hormone. A Brazil nut has a good amount of selenium. Number two, radiation, okay? So if you're exposed to radiation, um, there's something called iodine-131, which is radioactive. And that can lodge right into the thyroid, the thyroid receptors. And so there is a remedy, or shall I say, a preventative measure that you can do if you are exposed or know that you're gonna be exposed to radiation, okay? And that is potassium iodide. You don't have to get my brand, you can get another brand but you should probably have it around your house just in case there is some type of radiation problem. Because if you take it between 24 hours before exposure or up to four hours after exposure, you can protect your thyroid from the radioactive iodine that is in the environment, it's in the food, it's in the water. But I wouldn't recommend taking potassium iodide as a general supplement. And so you really only wanna take it when you need it, so you can just store it away. And so if you happen to need it at some point, it's available. Because I will guarantee if there is some type of threat of um, some type of radiation problem, you won't be able to find it because everyone's gonna buy it up real quick. All right, number three, goitrogen foods. These are foods that have certain things in them that have the potential to deplete iodine and cause a goiter, okay, which is an, an enlarged thyroid gland, okay? The thyroid gland swells up. What's interesting about this, out of all the things that can do that, cassava is at the top of the list, not only because it binds iodine directly, but because it also has two additional chemicals that can potently block iodine, okay? These two chemicals right here. And unfortunately, there are certain populations, certain groups around the world that consume a lot of cassava. And even if you're getting enough from your diet, from seafood or fish, if you're consuming a lot of this, you can end up being deficient. In fact, it's like 1.88 billion people worldwide are deficient in iodine. All right, another set of foods would be soy, corn, and canola, okay? There's also large populations that are consuming soy, corn, and canola. In fact, probably the entire world is consuming soy and corn, not to mention being fed to the animals. And so if you're trying to get iodine from animals, if they're consuming a lot of this, it's going to be somewhat difficult because it's going to be deficient. Cruciferous vegetables, okay? Now, I have videos just on this one topic. And there are a lot of health benefits from taking cruciferous vegetables, okay? Cruciferous vegetables have a mild effect on binding iodine. It's not as strong as cassava, and it's definitely not as strong as these two. But also when you steam or cook 
cruciferous vegetables, that will reduce this effect right here. Also, if you're consuming an adequate amount of iodine and you're also consuming cruciferous, it's not going to be the reason why you're deficient in iodine. You probably would only be deficient if you consumed large amounts of cruciferous with no seafood, no fish, no sea kelp, and also other foods that might have iodine. Now, just on that note, you might consume a lot of vegetables and fruits, right? Well, guess what? Vegetables and fruits are low in iodine, okay? Eggs are a good source of iodine, and meats and nuts will give you like a moderate amount of iodine. So the best source of iodine is seafood, like shellfish, things like that. Very high in iodine, and also fish from the sea, as well as sea kelp. Now, sea kelp is a vegetable in the sea, but I'm not talking about vegetables on land, okay? That's a whole different thing. Vegetables on land do not have a lot of iodine. Now, there is also some uh, iodine binding effects from peanuts and pine nuts and millet and definitely rice, okay? Rice, soy, and corn, and cassava are at the top of the list. This is why we have an iodine deficiency in parts of India, Southeast Asia, South America, and Africa. This right here, because even though you're getting iodine, having some of these uh, things can actually uh, make you deficient. All right, number four, bromine. Okay, now what is bromine? Well, it's a chemical that they put into um, certain breads, okay? And um, it's a dough conditioner, okay? And it's called potassium bromine, okay? So this can block your iodine, okay? And then you have fluoride. Both of these are in the same family in, of elements, but fluoride also can block iodine. Now you're saying probably, well, I'm not really exposing myself to fluoride, okay? Well, do you ever get your teeth whitened? Well, do you ever take a shower? Do you ever drink your water without a filter? City water uh, has fluoride in it, right? And so you can expose yourself, your skin to it, it can be absorbed, or you can drink it. So it's very important to have a filter that can filter this out, as well as number five, perchlorate. What is perchlorate? It's a chemical they put in uh, city water that uh, kills bacteria, and it has the effect of blocking iodine. And this is another reason why you need a filter on your house, a water filter, both in the shower and uh, on the sink. All right, number six, oral contraceptives, okay? How many women are on birth control pills, right? That's gonna block iodine, as well as certain medications. And there's even a chemical in cigarette smoke that can block iodine as well. So if you're a smoker consuming a lot of these foods right here and being exposed to this and this, chances are you could be deficient in iodine. The other thing about iodine is that your body doesn't have any mechanism to prevent excretion of iodine. So it gets stored to some degree, but it doesn't store for a long period of time. Your body uses up a lot of this iodine. So it's not like other minerals that your body can actually slow down and regulate the release of it. Uh, you can go through it pretty quickly. Now that you know the reasons why you might be deficient in iodine, Let's talk about the unusual symptoms that you might get if you're deficient. And that video is right here.